Um, okay, so the first order is to put the minutes from last time, which Mary does so nicely. Does yes, you know? great job, Mary. Do you have any comments or questions? No, make a motion of approve. Okay. Second. All in favor? Okay. Um, financial warrants? Yeah, the warrants are making the rounds. Okay. Um, you have a copy of your December results uh, in front of you. Um, things are still looking pretty good. There's uh, a couple of lines that I uh, need to dig into a little um, more deeply to find out um, why there are some deficits that there seem to be in those lines. Um, and then this is the time of the year when I want to be able to do some uh, projection of encumbrances of salaries because your salaries are not in the financial system you know, being able to walk that up to the end of the year just so that we have a really clear picture of where you stand right now. Um, so that's something I want to work on and have for you for your uh, February meeting so that um, we have some sense of, you know, truly where you stand and um, there some things that we need to be thinking about uh, at that point as well. So, um, you know, like I said, there are a couple of things that came up as, as and I know one is under special ed uh, transportation, and there was some back and forth with the SPED director about that, so I want to get together with her today and uh, just to see where all that stands. Um, um, you know, so again, I just want to begin, take a look at you know where your school choice accounts are, your uh, early childhood involvement accounts, and whatever, and just make sure all the things are in a healthy place for you, <coughs> and whether or not we need to bring some adjustments forward. Um, so that's what I'm uh, looking to do for the February meeting. <coughs> yeah, I mean overall you're overall you're good, but again, without having salaries encumbered within the system, you, you know, that could you wanna get a more realistic picture for you so that you um, can have confidence about where we stand. Um, okay. Anything about the warrants? Just uh, public comments. No public. Um, Here's no Matt. Matt's Frontier grads home from Bentley. Oh, hey Matt. Welcome. How's Bentley? <laughs> That was a thumbs up for those of you who can't, can't see. <laughs> <laughs> told me he's having a kid a great first month. see the graduates help yeah. out. Um, okay, on to unfinished business. Is there any update on sprinklers? <clears throat> so, yeah, where we're at with that is uh, Bob, Lesko, Brian, um, Tom, um, and I have to get together. And right now, the bids that came in were higher than the budget. Mm -hmm. So, we got to figure out what the next step is. Um, moving forward, so. A lot higher? More than we have budgeted, so it was a lot higher. Um, so, and that's kind of where we're at, so that, that's where we're at. Okay. Um, so but so we're, but we're, we're safe until we make the adjustments. Wait, so the, 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 system, we, the systems are on. Yeah. They're on, um, but they, they wanted to put new heads on all the ends of it as part of the project. Yep. Um, so, we, have, we might have to scale back the project, do you think? Or we don't know? Well, the, the, the multiple options I imagine is to either you break up the project, mm -hmm. do half building and half the building, go back to town for more money to get, mm -hmm. you know, the full project, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, when you're, I believe it's, I maybe generally, it was, you know, it was well over thirty yeah, thousand over right. or something like that. So it's something that it's not like we could just pull from somewhere else to cover the cost. So it's okay. put on hold until we come up with a new plan, and obviously we got to work with the town to do that. Okay. Um, and the update on that? Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any construction activity over there. Do you, does anyone know when it's? I, they didn't have anything planned. I should have asked them last night, Because they were holding off on their vote until the next meeting. I can't, I'll have to look it up to see. And now it's getting confusing because now the dispensary project going in. That was in yeah. yesterday, so. That's over. That's sure. Yeah, that's not next to us. That's not near us. <laughs> and from what I understand, that will bring money to the town more than. Yes. Right. Is that Waitley or Deerfield? 
you it's think it's in Deerfield because it's, it's right on the line. Yeah, those buildings are in Wayne. So, so you know where the Circle K is? <coughs> yeah. You know, so that, those red Yankee, the Yankee Yankee peddler. Yeah. dollar store or whatever you want to call that. That's, that's in Wakely. Many people think that's in Deerfield because you know, they think the road is the line road. That's like 6% that could come to the town and help. That corner generates help. more business. <laughs> Could generate business for you know for tax re you know revenue for the schools and other things. Or Hamptons, any indication? Oh my! <laughs> <coughs> They'll have That's a surplus. Traffic nightmare. Oh. <laughs> <They're sad>. Yeah. Hampton isn't doing as well as they projected because of the location. Uh, yeah, That's a good easy, easy on, easy off location. We'll see. Okay. Um, so we'll wait to hear or see what we can find out by the next meeting. So oh, can one of you let me know when the next one is? Mm -hmm. And is it planning or zoning we need to go to? Planning. planning. Zoning approved, so now it's in the planning boards. I would imagine must be coming up, their meeting must be coming up pretty soon. <coughs> it's usually like right after. Is it like the first Thursday or second Thursday or, or is it one of those type of days? It's usually the same, like the second <coughs> something of the month or first or third or What was the last one? The last one was December 4th. Yeah, it was so Which was the first? The first Tuesday. So, so it may have already. They may have already had it. Okay. Um, so on to the business. Unless there's anything else. Um, school improvement plan. We have reviewed it a few times. And we just didn't have an official vote last time. So I think that unless there's. I make a motion to accept the 2018-2019 uh, school improvement plan. I just had a question. So are these alignment with state standards? Are those some kind of, is that a list of standards? Yeah. Um, it's after each goal. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, the teachers are evaluated based on a rubric from the state, and these are from that. We also those are, are just the ones you're using for that goal. These are these would be sort of the rationale for why we have that goal or okay. how it how it connects with everything. One of the one of the uh, things that sometimes happens with the school improvement plan is that things are disjointed, nothing connects to anything else. So um, I really wanted to make sure that works and it, yeah, it, it connects with it. Um, what is power school? Is that sort of some sort of that's just our data so, collection. Yeah, our student okay. information system. <coughs> Used for different things. For tracking like grades and yep. information about students. The report cards would come off of Power School. Some people can some parents can see Power School at other districts. We don't have that. Here, right? You do at the secondary level, the middle and secondary, and that's how they do all their grades and that kind of thing. So it's like you can see information. That's all mine. Ready to move forward with the plan now that it's yeah, time January to, to start month. the next Ready one. <laughs> so I Bob made a motion, right? I second it. All in favor. Okay. Excellent. Substitute rates. All right. So um on January first, the Massachusetts um set a new uh, minimum wage. And if you take the day rate of substitutes, we fall just below. Mm -hmm. And so I already gone forward and instructed the bookkeeper. We haven't had a payroll since January first, um, but the <coughs> payroll to raise it. Um, and I sent kind of a note out saying I took a, the liberty of making it, telling the pay payroll to do it at 80. We can obviously make adjustments because nothing's been paid yet. But um, you know, I'm asking the school committee to raise it from 75 to 80 dollars per day. Therefore, bring us above the. $12 mark per hour um, during the day. Um, event, eventually next year we're going to have to address it again. Um, so um, it's one of those things where I'd like the entire, all the schools to be on the same page. So but if, even if we want to do, um, we had some side, side talk that maybe we should go up even further, um, you know, incorporate next year or start next year with the full, um, where the change will be, because you know they're running on the January system, we're running on the 
um, starting year in the fall, whether or not next year we start the year um, a little bit higher um, you know, budget and such. We can take a look at what that way um, affect the budget. But so today I'm looking for a vote just to bring up to $80 um, a day. And it also puts us in line with like, contact a lot of the other area schools because it's right in the rain with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So we're not losing qualified subs to somebody else. Um, one, you depend, I mean, we have qualified subs, and we have subs that are loyal to our schools. Um, we have great kids, so a lot of people enjoy, um, enjoy really enjoy working on our district. I'm not saying other districts don't have great kids, too, but that's what the, the subs say when they basically come to our buildings, they enjoy it. Um, so it's not usually a check alone, um, but um, I think the 80 will put us in competitive with the other, the other schools. There are some schools that are a little bit higher. Um, and you know we're going to have to raise next year again. Um, it'll be from 12 to 12.75, um, so it'll be another, another significant bump. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. So any discussions on that? Or so moved. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Yeah, I think we're just going to have to look at the longer term impact of that because it's going all the way up to 15. Yep. And that's those I, are big jumps. What's the date? What's the year on that? 2023. So those are significant percentage increases. And I don't know, if, when we get into the budget discussion, we talk about how many, if there are other people around that range for other jobs, or if it's only the subs. Because gonna, we're going to need to think about who else we need to be like that's corrected. Or we, I did another needed. correction. Uh, we had a <coughs> part-time cafeteria worker that fell below 12. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, I had that adjusted as well. To yeah. the, so um, that was, those were the only two positions. Okay. That I'm aware of, so but that was brought to my attention. That was here, or that was uh, somewhere else? You don't, I don't need to know. It wasn't late. Did you say front there? Someone who's fairly new. Yeah, it, it, it may have been way late, actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I just told them to make sure across, make sure across the board, make sure they were broke. Again, it was only, it's not a, those won't have a huge impact on the budget because it was, you know, maybe it was 15 First, cents difference, yeah. but, it, but still, so, it's, yeah. I guess you could say well, that. Well, to 15, it does, it we'll does. have a an impact. Oh, yes, certainly will. Percentage-wise. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be more than the rest of the staff's increases. Oh, it definitely will. Oh, it will be. Oh, yeah. I mean, All if right. you're going to go from, I mean, the percentage you're talking about is 20-something percent, 25 percent <coughs> increase in three or, four, yeah. three or four years. That's significant. So. <coughs> okay. Uh, Ms. Dak enrollment report. That's interesting. Yeah, so um, so the enrollment reports, I think it's, <clears throat> when you look at them, I do say you have to take with, with some grain of salt when you project ahead. Um, when I looked at all the projections ahead of, throughout the all four towns and, and frontier, they, they, it's really a flat line on all of them. Um, so, and they've been wrong in the past. When we built, the, when we built Frontier, they yeah, expected us in, within 10 years to be over 1,000 students or something like that. Um, and that, uh, that was 20 years ago. We never got anywhere near there. So. Um, is this based on Wheatley residents or all students? This is Wheatley residents. Okay. Yep. This, the school choice numbers um, are on the last page. Um, and the information I just gave you actually have the births, the actual births for the last three years? Which are higher than what they're projecting. Okay. One of them was 18. That's good news. People are having babies and waiting. We're moving to 19. It's on that first page there. 19 born between September 1st, 16, and August 31st, 17. That's, That's a lot. Right. And, and 11 in the previous year and after 16. 16, yeah. So there's healthy baby numbers. Yeah. Hey, Incoming kindergarten. Low. Mm -hmm. the, the, this information right here, um, Rhonda, a week or two ago, <coughs> was trying to get information for for them for projecting from Waitley you know, from 2013 and up about newborns. Is this all that stuff? Because she was try, having a tough time trying to get it from our our town. They requested for the information from us, so. Their numbers are got 
Okay, because this, this was a couple weeks ago when Rhonda was talking oh, about okay. having a tough time to get something from Lynn. And this was over. I think that was probably. Yeah, well, apparently only the school committee can get this information from the town. So did you? Yeah, well, the she, census information, okay. which is what I got, okay. but those projections are not, I no. think. Well, when you say a few weeks, you, do you mean longer ago? Because no. This, I, the information I, they requested this was over. Was over I think Rhonda talked to me because I wrote it down when I was still working on my desk and I had a piece of paper to take with okay. me and stuff. So I'm going to say it was like two weeks ago that well, maybe it's now it's three, but it's okay. still within, you know, she was have a tough time to get stuff from, I think it was July of July 31st of 2013 to 2016, you know, January 1st or something like that. So if this is the information, then I won't, if, if did you oh, have oh, to? Oh, oh, that's where I knew what she was. This, yeah. This is what she's looking for. Okay. She's looking for the census. Same, okay. Same as I was. So thanks. I'll get I'll get a copy to her. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Well, so that's good news if the real numbers are better than the numbers they're using. So yes. That will help the projections. It's good information. Yeah, and in the, in the, the story school, doesn't change. Everything. Right. The, the school <laughs> the size of Waitley, you're you know the only time you the real numbers you have to worry about is if you get larger than the <coughs> class size. You know what I mean? Or you get lower than, you know, you get too a lot lower than the class size. You know what I mean? So anything in between, obviously, we fill with school choice. So when you say Wheatley, you know, if you had a sudden spike of a class of 24, and you can't take in school choice for that class, then they would have implications in the budget. So it's this weird game we get to, we get to play because mm -hmm. some of the <clears throat> school choice is now offsetting the budget. So if you have a, a, a population growth in your town, all of a sudden some of those school choice slots that you were using to help subsidize certain things in the budget isn't there. So it's kind of it's one of those things where it's great to have a healthy budget, but we're in this game yeah. where we just have to keep an eye on it. Correct. You want the population grow but not too and, much. And be evenly distributed. Right. 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 That's okay. Evenly distributed, we want the same, you know. We need, we need more blizzards. Yeah, yeah. This morning's not gonna do it. It's not going to help with the book baby boom. Okay. The other only other thing I was I was looking through is um, just things to notice. Their choice out is very good in Waitley. Um, choice leaving Waitley is very is low. So that's it's a great that's a great number to kind of be um, proud of the school. And then also, the thing you know is some of our SPED outplaced is, is, is high. And I know Chris is going to talk a little bit about, about um, a little bit, you can talk about some extra money budget. Extra money? Not extra money, but uh, when we're planning next year's budget. Oh, to yeah. ask for extra yeah, yeah, yeah. money. I thought you were saying some of our SPED, we're money. seeing a little bit, you know, some additional SPED, special ed needs that um, we need to start preparing for. So, so I had a question. Is <coughs> When I looked at, um, you know, has birth year, and then there's some years where pre-K had zero. Does that mean there's no no babies born in lately those years, or they just did not go to every school? Mm -hmm. Which page are you on? Um, I think it might be the first, it's the first one. See, and it says- Is it they didn't have the preschool? Well, Maybe it was just a half day preschool, and they weren't tracking it? Because you have a birth, you have a birth. You have the births. I you have births that would have them there, so. Oh right, yeah. That's a good I question. I think that maybe but why is in 2004 the there's. Well, years. there was. That was the school year of 2009. Is that when your son was here for the full day? The one day no, he one was. Year? He was born. In oh, he was born. Uh, my guess would have been that was the one full year. Oh wait a minute, yeah. Full day. Yeah, 2009. Yeah, we did a full day. 2014, 15, that would be the full day they had. Yeah, so they didn't we had track it for one year. They didn't track it for, for the half day. For the half day <coughs> program, I guess. Probably yeah, did. but after that was also half days in its track. Until 14, 15 was? Uh, I think that was the full year, and then the next couple years after that were half day. Mm -hmm. Then say, I don't know. Girls were in no, because Regina. Regina is the one that brought it to full day back, I think in 9, 2009, 2010, when we did have 14 for one year, and it wasn't paying for itself. You gotta look at the school year, 
And then we just brought it back only a few years ago in 2000, well, probably 14, 15, we brought back full-time kindergarten. Correct? We're not even that Pretty far away. No, it's not that years. far away. My girls were in preschool then, and it was only half day. Mm -hmm. I think pre-K is not tracked as closely as other, am I right? Oh, it doesn't matter. Can we find, just a little side note, can we find out when they go to full-time pre-K or kindergarten? Pre-K? Full-time No, kindergarten. kindergarten. Full-time kindergarten. Have we always been full-time? Do you remember? Uh, well, so, and I, I'm talking about pre-K, excuse me. Okay. Pre-K, full-time pre-K. Yeah. Because that'll, that'll make it different because it, it was a couple years ago. It was two years ago. Was it two? This is the second so or third year. The third year. I think it's the second. second. If it's a, it's the second. Because last year we had those Deerfield kids. Because yeah, last year was the first course. year before. Yeah. Mm. So that's seventeen, eighteen. Well, that it's one's more than two years. Right it's more than two direction. years ago. I mean, this is. You're thinking this is the second year, and last year was the first year. It was I, before. I think it's the third year. Yeah, because so, it was when Maggie and Sadie went to kindergarten. And, yeah. 16, 17, probably? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's weird because there is zero there on some of those years. And if I can ask and find out what the, the scoop was. And I wonder if they build this every year. So I wonder if it, it's been that way for years. Does it's ours look similar to like Conway or something? Or <coughs> um, other towns? It looks similar to. Conway's had a huge population drop, yeah. um, and it shows it continued dropping. Deerville has a slight rise um, after some years of decline, but um, but with a slow and steady increase, not huge numbers up um, within ten. Um, Sunderland is up and down. Yeah, um, they got they have a more of um, a population. That's um, the transient apartments. population with the apartment complex yeah. and such. So mm -hmm. you, have, you have these. It's very hard to but. You know, project ahead, um, but right now they're on the they're on the growth side over the last few years. Uh -huh. So um, <clears throat> just know what their problems are. They're they're starting to max out. They're maxing out the size of their school right now. So so that's where they're at. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Capital project request for town. All right. So, so I'm putting that together um, right now. Okay. Um, and uh, met with Bob Lesko yesterday morning, trying to, trying to do all four at once, okay. um, putting the paperwork together. Um, right now, we'll have to see where the sprinkler system goes, yeah. is it in, in the sense of total ask, even though it's kind of been on the town side, it's a school building ask. Mm -hmm. um, Chris and I were talking about there's some flooring, we want to get some flooring replaced, um, and start putting that on a rotation. Um, a lot of the other, following the kind of the, the pattern other towns are doing is mm -hmm. the carpet, Basically, the buildings, I don't want to say if they're all the same age, but they're all the wear and tear level. Close. Yeah, they are close. And so <coughs> we want to start rotating, maybe do two two classrooms a year of carpet. It's about five grand a classroom. Um, Chris also has concerns about the nurses', nurses office the nurse's floors. office floor. The tiles are popping up. It might be um, best to get that redone, too, to see what that and kind of tie that into this year. Um, we're also looking at getting pricing together for possible risers. What is that? For the gym? Yeah. Oh, new, new ones. ones. New ones. Do we have? Risers. What are risers? Are they the things you pull out? No, risers is what you're... Um, like when the kids put on... Oh, when you stand? Oh, when you perform on the other side. Yeah. Small staircases, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at that and then um, the... Uh, we're looking at the uh, tables in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, that they are well torn and maybe putting the two of those together as one capital request to kind of okay. as, a, as a furniture but um, yeah we're getting prices on that right now as well so I had a question I don't you might know like how often the gym floor gets waxed because basketball has started and I noticed <coughs> the kids are sliding, sliding all everywhere. over the place I, or if it's once a year maybe we it, do it right it's usually done, it's usually season. it's done once a year it's usually done in the summer because of the fumes um, and then also, if it, um, the Frontier sometimes is done, done. is done twice a year, and yours wasn't done this year. No. So, um, the, the hold up is that Dan doesn't know how to do it, and it's not one of those things that 
I want him to DIY until he sees someone mm -hmm. else doing it. Um, a lot of, lot, of, lot of the slipping and sliding is A, the dust that doesn't get swept up on the floor, and B, the sneakers the kids are wearing. Well, I mean, the parents I've talked to, it's all new sneakers. I'm just saying, it's, it's yeah. dust. If you, don't, if you don't sweep the floor, it's just like doing a basketball game at Frontier. I'm a firm believer, like they do in, in high, uh, was at the college game, they sweep it at halftime. They should be yeah. sweeping at halftime because yeah, dust sweep gets... It, it has to be wet mop as well, too. So it, with the, the yeah. surface is not... The tackiness of the surface, unless I mean I can go out and look at the floor, but um, if there's wax, if there's if there's wax there, it has to do with maintaining the you know it's, you know you get you got uh, it's not actually wax. It's, it's not wax. It's a polyurethane that's a finish on the floor. So it's basically a type of paint. That's, yeah, yeah. Clear right. paint. I think this gem is the least sticky of all of them. Yeah, right. right. Now, so so um, you know we we will put it on the radar. But is it too. how long does it if it if we found a way to get it done? Could it be done over the weekend, or does it need more time to? Weekend, weekend. The fast drying week. Yeah. The problem is, you can take, it takes it, it takes a day to prep it because you got to you got to wet mop, you got to vacuum it, wet mop it, and get it really cleaned, and then because you can't have any so any they screen it. They screen it also. That's they have the like light screening on it to, to get the surface crap off of it, <laughs> and then they vacuum it. They don't have to usually wet mop it too but they have to screen it. <laughs> if you're going to strip it, then they strip it right down to the bare wood and redo the lines and stuff. But here, they just come in and they screen it. They have a special machine with this, like a like a Brillo pad or, or, or a Scotch Brite pad, a big one, and they go in there and they scratch it up and they take all that and then they then, at the same time it's vacuuming into a vacuum system and stuff. And then the polyurethane is a high, you know, very high VOC, smelly product. Close the doors, have the other one open up and suck the fumes. It's tough, in the winter, it's tough in the winter because you can't, it sounds you like open up the door, you got cold weather coming in, so it's not going to dry very fast, and mm -hmm. it's not like you can turn heat up because heat doesn't dry, it's the, the air that dries it. Bad air out, new air in, Obviously, not like I know anything. This, this <laughs> is the guy who knows way too much about this. <laughs> no, now that you're retired, Bob, I, do, I have I, a job for you. I, I noticed you have the skill set that we need and also some free time. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like you're careful what you wish for. Yeah, so we should make sure we get this on the radar for next year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, over the did summer. it get whatever that poet did it get done in the summer? No. 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 Oh, okay. That's that's, that's why it's missing. Like, even that's the missing so that, part. That would probably be yeah. So it really they so probably should have. Apologies to all the rec teams. <laughs> you the, we probably should, if you, a wet mop will help it because it takes a you know what I mean. Um, yeah. So basically you're just mopping the floor with. Um, and another thing is if they. Um, you know, when, they, when they dust the floor, I'm saying this out loud because um, your connection to the rec department. Yeah. Um, the other thing that can help that just having played a ton of basketball is the in front of the wet mop. You put a towel. You put a towel down and you wet mop it before you literally take a spray bottle and you make your a dry mop and you just you know the dry mop. You put a towel in front of it and then you just kind of put wet. Wow, down together you two make really what the wet mop. Yeah. Saturday so a dry mop is, is a, the, the dry mop is a yeah, this is a great school community. <laughs> the dry mop is that is that big is that yeah, four foot head that's yeah, in front of the you shake the heck right. out of all that dust dust goes everywhere. Right. right. So what you do is you dry mop it and then you put towels over it and then you spray you spray with the water spray it and then wet mop. That's not the true wet mop I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually mopping the floor. Okay. But if you do that before each game, it'll really help out as well. Okay. We used to have to do you that. You probably won't get anybody because no one would want to do it. But at least if you dry mop it, you'd be surprised after you do it and you shake it, how much crap comes out of that thing. Because I used well, to do it in this, especially in this gym. The other thing I used to get the kids to, they're tracking in all the salt and dirt. They make sure they wipe their feet. And, they really shouldn't be wearing. And they should be, they should be the wearing the sneakers into the building. Yeah, 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 but but that's a that's a that's a tough thing to do. Okay. All right. Okay. So back to the <laughs> capital projects, though. So the gym is more of a long term. Make sure we keep keep that clean and yeah. up to date. Whatever we have to do every summer. Um, the capital projects were due in December for the town. I was at the capital planning meeting last night. Okay. There is nothing from the school on there. There is going to be another meeting in I think the end of January, beginning of February. So I think we could get something on there if we okay. want to. The other thing is that the Capital Planning Committee is gonna go and visit all the town buildings this year okay. and uh, sort of evaluate the state of the building. So just, I, I'd encourage them to come to the school. So we should be ready to show them whatever we think we need to show. We wanna show 
um, that is needed in terms of a project. There's con they're, they're eager to get ahead of everything. So mm -hmm. to the extent that we get these out there, I think even though they're late, it's good to get it out there. And if we don't get it this year, then we'll at least be on the docket for next year. I don't, I'm not saying we won't get it this year, but I'm just saying we need to be mindful of the deadline is in December. Probably, probably the, one of the things that you know we're looking at new ones, but we still have an old one that we need to take care of, which is the sprinklers. Maybe instead of going after new money, yeah, no, they maybe, know that. Maybe, maybe we, <coughs> instead of trying to split it up half this year and half next year, maybe that's something so we can take care of it once and for all. Yeah, ask for more money through the capital to add to what we have, so we can go through, you know, go with one of the bids, so we can at least. Get it done. Well, I, yeah. and I think we bring them into all the needs so that they are well aware and they can work with us in planning for what they are because they don't want to they don't want to find out about things late because mm -hmm. that's harder for them. But if they know things are coming, that's better. Mm -hmm. The other thing is smaller projects like the flooring to the extent that we have operating budget at the and I know in past years we've looked to see how much money we might have at the end of the year to take care of some of those projects that we want to try and think about using some of our operating money for that if we have them over so that we don't have to tap the capital budget right how many how many floors do we have now with with tile in it did we do two a couple of years ago or do we do three we did three K and second huh we did three pre-k k and second and the entrance to pre-k okay i mean that's maybe that was the plan was to try and keep doing those and that the might be in line with what darius was saying yeah that sounds like what the 5K before a couple changes. Floors, couple right. Is that what you're thinking? Is do the tile to get, to the get them all? Right. Are you thinking for capital improvement, or are you talking about using so, the money at the end of the year? Well, we talked about end of year money, and that's where you know realistically the tables and such would probably come from. Um, but just to put that on our needs list mm -hmm. and, and to kind of <clears throat> much like we're doing with the frontier thing is kind of attack it from both angles. Mm -hmm. You have your list, and then figure out what right. you should go to towns with, me not the. <clears throat> the carpet is a, is a just kind of an ongoing thing that we could roll that into the budget, but then it eats up all the smaller, yeah. um, the, the smaller things. Um, you know, in the in, in the final thing, and I don't know if this if this falls under capital, um, is that putting a fencing around the generator? Again, that really there's a part of me that's like that shouldn't be the schools. Yeah. You know, what I mean, the, the schools. It's hooked up here as a town building. Site the generator is not really for the school; it's for the town. Right. Um, I don't know how if they'll look at it through the same lens I'm looking at it, but you know we didn't we didn't ask for the generator, so right. to speak. It wasn't a project that yeah. was necessary for programming. Um, but as you see it out there, it would be nice to protect it and mm -hmm. um, you know kids around it and that kind of stuff. Although I don't think it's a danger, but you know keeping kids mm -hmm. off of it. And that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe on capital improvement, maybe we should you know figure out get get a few bids. Maybe we should do put on capital capital thing for three classrooms this year so that way the extra money can go towards the you know the tables or new chairs or something for that or stuff but maybe we should just put one in for three classrooms I think they were five thousand dollars roughly a piece I mean if we ask for fifteen thousand to do it and this is the reason why easier to clean mm -hmm. You know, if somebody gets sick, it's not into the carpet. You know, these little things, it's easy to clean. Well, <laughs> true. true to point, it's but thanks for the You know, I'm well, allergens like, and all of that kind yeah. of stuff that you just can't yeah. get out of the way. Yeah, yeah, no, we should definitely get them on the list. I just think we want to also be thinking about other ways we might get them done. Yeah. And get them through. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, anything else on the capital? Oh, the playground. I've been previewing a playground that we're thinking about. So, you know, that sounds like it's less um, near term. But yeah. in terms of a capital project, I'm trying to think about. S someone mentioned that the they're going to sell the center school, which is the one in town that's right on the curve around when you come around from the Whaley Inn to the, to the school. On the right, there's mm -hmm. that old school there. Okay. There is a playground in the back of that building that I don't know if it could be repurposed, but. It's, a it's in pretty good shape. Yeah. It depends who you talk to. Well, from the, from the road, it, from the road, it looks, from the road, it looks pretty good, but it's great. I've never played on it, so. Right. There isn't one much to it. it. I know there isn't, but if it's yeah. another piece that could be easily taken, taken apart and, and. So there is some interest in exploring okay. it to see if it's worth recycling at all and repurposing. 
Maybe we can get Keith to go up there one day with, I'll go up there with him and say, hey, is this feasible to yeah. take this? Or someone from the school may want to go and yeah. see what they think. So. We got plenty of room out there, don't we? We do, but we had specifically wanted something for the early Pre childhood second. Yeah. Of the is this a different place for them, like over from it? Well, outside? that was where we okay. got started. We haven't really got a plan yet, but I'm just previewing that we want to be thinking about it. The other, you know, the other thing that we really should be, be looking at is are we going to put a softball field out here? Yeah. We're going, we're going to lose a softball field. They're moving towards making the one next to the fire station a softball field. Okay. So, so they can do. They don't need to do one here, but we right. can certainly look at improving the field. Here. Okay. So that, that was something we talked about last year. So many feet of the facility. Yeah. Now, yeah. now it's even. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially with the southern breeze and the. <laughs> yeah. 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 We won't go there. Although the fire station too is. Not it's not that far away. <laughs> Everything's close. So are they not going to use that for because. We have baseball practice there. Is that are we going to be losing that or? Uh, I think so. I, don't I think know. you could have both. You can still have. Could we fl we played practice. when I was coaching softball, and when we had we were able they to use a nice field, we were able to put the pitcher's mound in front of the baseball mound for the kids, and we would have a forty-five foot or forty-five foot measurement from the plate out for the girls to pitch off the mound in front of the mound right there and yeah. stuff. Which is, you know, instead of having all dirt field, you have a grass field. And I mean, sometimes the girls really liked it when we played on a, a better field mm -hmm. versus something that was, you know, just for softball or something. So. I see more of the scheduling, but now that I think yeah. of it, there wasn't always softball team anytime might be right. on their way to baseball. No. It was, they had other fields that they, yeah, there's right. not as many softball teams. I mean, maybe there again, is there something that if we could take from that field i mean there's a nice backstop there is it possible to take it apart and put and add it's it to allowed. something that we could use down you know if not it's just going to be torn down and thrown away as scrap anyway so when, when bob starts that doing thing, fence behind the catchers the yeah. blue school yeah at the blue oh, school oh, at the blue school yeah, yeah the one at the fire station is not very good yeah, yeah i i've heard them say that but there again if we can if we could take it from there and put it over there to help reinforce or make it bigger for protection for the kids, you know, yeah. possibly. Yeah. To project a head onto my report, that's got to happen soon because they're closing soon. Yeah. On that property. Yeah. yeah. But it's something I think if, unless Bob's going to tear it up the first week in April or something, Bob could probably, probably, probably work with us because he is a, a, as far as I know, he's a decent guy. Bob, Bob O'Bear. Oh, okay. So you're going to the yeah, I'm just oh, saying the with the buyers. Like yeah, the, no, no. There are too many bobs. There are, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the guy would probably, if we could use yes. it, he wouldn't he mind would us. happy to have it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Make I'm a little sure. note and talk to your husband about that. I will. <laughs> Doesn't watch my meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, we should be, I mean, to the extent we have ideas, we, the more that we know what we want to do, the better it is to get that out there. But I know we also, it sounds like we still have some things to talk about. Um, okay, should we move on to the budget? For sure. Um, we are pretty early on in the process of planning this list. I'm trying to pull some figures together. So this is not <coughs> the deal, but it's um, some first blush on all of this. Um, just a little bit about um, the TMS Michael. philosophy around budgeting is we try to be as fully transparent as we possibly can. Um, we believe that this is the public's money and so it is our responsibility to do that. So what we try to do is to look at the budget in total in terms of what we call an all funds budget so that every funding source and every expense is listed so you know fully what it costs to educate a child in Whiteley. And then um, removing from that funding from other sources other than your local budget, um, then looking at really what would need to be voted on mm -hmm. your town floor. So um, the process has begun to pull a budget master together um, that links a whole bunch of uh, workbook pages in Excel um, to be able to do that. So um, this is a work in progress. Uh, I think the big thing right now is that um, we are all waiting with bated breath for House <laughs> 1, yes. um, which is um, due to the legislature by the fourth Wednesday of January, which is the 23rd. 
I don't think we'll see it before then. What is that? that we're That's the governor's budget. Um, and he is required by law to have it in so many days after the legislature goes into session. And right now that date is January 23rd. So, um, you know, looking at your expenses, obviously it is the context of revenue. And so that's what we need to, need to see is what are those Chapter 70 funds going to look like. There is a huge push at the state level right now um, to be able to, particularly among the uh, Superintendents Asso uh, Association, matter of fact, they're hosting public forums at Fitchburg State, one in Walden, I think, and one somewhere in the southern part of the, southeastern part of the state as well tonight on the Chapter 70 funding formula and the proposal that has been out there for a couple of years now to redo that formula um, that has not been acted on. Uh, other things I've heard in the wind is that uh, the December revenue projections are down mm -hmm. for the state um, because people were not incentivized to pay property taxes early or other kinds of taxes because of the reduction in what you get on your tax return, um, you know, uh, the limit of $10,000. So state revenues are down for December. Um, you know, they're hoping there'll be an uptick in January, but, um, you know, again, all of those are sort of the moving parts of this. So um, I'm trying, you know, again, just trying to construct the budget and get um, all of the links working and, and whatever in this sort of working spreadsheet. So um, what I've given you is basically the salaries as, as I know them right now, um, <coughs> things that uh, Chrissy has put into the budget as well, and then also, um, the last two pages are the um, sort of the operations, the building operations. Um, we are getting ready to go out to bid for transportation, so I left those numbers stagnant, but obviously those will increase um, once we know what those are. Um, and there are some other things with salaries that represent currently what's in force in terms of salaries because um, you're about to negotiate contracts for next year, and so all of that will need to be projected as we work through. But this is kind of the format that we use at TMS, it just helps you understand what the totality of the budget is, where all of the pockets of funding come from, um, and then what is the local impact, which is that last um, blue column. So we'll continue to plug away at this. By February, we'll have a more complete picture for you to really be able to dig into, and by that point, we'll at least have the governor's chapter 70 numbers, and then obviously it's gonna work its way through the legislature, but at least it gives us, um, you know, probably a worst case scenario in terms of chapter 70, so we'll see where this all ends. So it's not getting how chapter 70 is reflected here, though. Um, this is yeah, this does not right? reflect any revenues okay. whatsoever. This is only the expense side, because right. I can't project that right now right. without knowing where the governor's budget is. So this is so just like projecting what we expect to spend. Spend, right. Actually. And based on where things have been um, offset by other funds in the past, I left those <coughs> um, the same as they are in this fiscal year. Again, we'll have to look at the status of some of those funds, like school choice school and early, choice, child, yeah. child, early childhood, whether we can sustain offloading that much onto those funds um, moving forward. So those are all part of the big analysis of what's current and what's to come that's going to happen over the, the course of uh, the coming okay. month. Um, so can we just focus on what are the increases for next year, just to make sure we're clear on, in the themes? So we have the salaries, the teacher salaries, yep. and the aid salaries are being negotiated. Transportation so will be huge. And transportation. Um, and then, um, what else? Is there anything else? For and then just kind of looking at special education, who's exiting, we project coming in, what kinds of services are we going to need, is that going to have an impact in that? Mm -hmm. uh, there's still work to be done uh, at this point. But those are usually the three <coughs> biggest moving parts um, to your budget, particularly where transportation is going to need to bid, um, you know, knowing where the dust will settle on that. Um, and we hope to get that uh, Do we have a contract for so many years and then we go out to bid? Yeah. <coughs> usually three years, sometimes five. Is there a big Cool. Was this bus Are we company? looking to do Was this bus company? Yeah. yeah. Um, you have to, um, by law. Yeah, you have, have to actually. Have we're due this year to go uh, yeah. for that. So, um, yeah. Um, there's not a big pool of buses, but it, there's been a change. You know, um, Gripco is obviously a serving district for years, I guess. Yeah. Um, um, and they've. Um, 
specific and they like the big against anybody else who kind of comes right. in. But, but we're projecting, why, why do we think it'll go up? Yeah. Um, just, you know, just covering regular. rates of their drivers. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got wage increases, health mm -hmm. benefit increases, uh, depending on how we write the specs, you know, how many years old the buses can be, do they need to buy buses because some of the buses will age out, you know, and putting in a provision for, you know, gas prices and whatever. Right now they're low, but OPEC is about to tighten the market, so that won't last long. You know, all of those things impact what the bids come in at. What I've noticed over the last couple of rounds of bids that TMS has done for districts is that um, it seems to be becoming more competitive amongst transportation providers. Mm -hmm. uh, surprise, a couple of years ago, we did one in uh, for Grant, a joint one for Granby Weir in Belchertown, um, and we had four bidders at the table, which I was surprised. Mm. We had five companies take bids out, the fifth one didn't return the bid. We had four companies at the table when mm -hmm. we opened them, which really just shocked me, because that's usually not the case. Mm. So it is becoming a little more competitive, and I think you know, that could be helpful in some ways. Um, but, you know, again, we'll, we'll put the bid out through the central register, you know, and all of the legal stuff that has to happen with that. And so we'll see. When does that happen, though? The time <coughs> um, the we're working on the bid this week. Oh, know, okay. to get it out this week um, so that we can get it in February. So we would know in, in February. Yeah. February. Mm -hmm. And a level, I don't know if I know the terminology correctly, a level service mm -hmm. increase. Is that the or? Yeah, that's usually where we sort of start, you know. Is that a set percentage or does that change from year to year? <coughs> um, a level service tends to be driven by um, what are your salary increases, which is an unknown at this point. You know, um, what are increases to contracted services, you know, again, which is uh, some of what, particularly with special education, we need to get to the bottom of what is being provided and Right now, I'm trying to piece that information from a lot of different sources. Um, you know, so who's providing services? How much do they charge? What does that look like? Um, the state comes out with numbers in terms of like out of, dis out of district tuitions and what people can charge. Um, I haven't seen those numbers yet, but again, some of those things will impact what we're looking at in terms of level of service. So. So our next meeting, we'll have a lot more information. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like and, a lot um, of things are we're yeah. pending right now. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the big thing will be what the Chapter 70 number is. Usually, the governor's number is the worst case scenario. Um, you know, the legislature usually bumps it up, it up a little bit. <coughs> there seems to be some good momentum. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think in, <coughs> uh, in terms of just getting that whole Chapter 70, it'll be interesting to see how those forums go um, tonight. I'm hoping they'll do some out in the western part of the state. Uh, as well, but just uh, to kind of get some public momentum up that Chapter There's 70 time. has not kept up with health insurance, has not kept up with special education, has not kept up with technology in schools. Uh, it is time. Yeah. 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 They're talking more. about it a lot at the, um, the, the conference. Oh, at the conference, yeah. 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 There's some districts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so yeah. in the state. But and then yeah. usually what we do in terms <coughs> of grants um, that might be helping to fund the budget is we look at trends and again trying to gather some of those data out of uh, the accounting office in terms of for example federal grants like special education has that been trending down over time or mm -hmm. trending up can we make some predictions about where we think it will fall um, mm -hmm. or do we just look at you know kind of a level fund from this past from this fiscal year just to, as a way to anticipate um, what the re potential revenue sources are that will bear on, um, on the budget so um, we're flying fast and furious in the office. I'm um, <laughs> trying to get all this uh, pulled together because it does require uh, a lot of analysis, a lot of different data points. And is there state funding for transportation for us, or we don't qualify for that? Um, the regional, yes. The regional, no. Yeah, not the town, but the not regional, the yes. Region. And that's um, okay. and that's another wild card because yeah. that's also subject to um, what's known as the nine C cuts that the governor can do in the middle of the year, you can choose to um, not fund those at, at the rate that um, the legislature originally intended. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's why you know, we tell people a budget is a snapshot in time and yeah. it's a moving target, and so you have to just kind of keep going back 
and, and taking a new picture to see what's going on. So. And with those at the frontier level, we've been very conservative with those numbers. Just mm -hmm. one of our neighbor neighbor schools got got, got hit by the INC company, got a hundred thousand dollars in the year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A school yeah. the same size as the frontier. So yeah. a neighbor north. So um, you know, ever since then, we've always been very you know ten to twenty percent lower in the budget. Right. You know, and then if we get anything above, then we roll that back in and, yes. and work that out. So, right. okay. but we don't benefit from that, so we don't. No, it doesn't. Right. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I mean, indirectly in terms of the assessment of, you know, the frontier. The frontier, right? right. But, um, and then the subs, we need to think about the right. what the yep. budget, what the rates are for that. anybody yeah. that's close to the minimum wage and how that's going. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. um, a lot of data to be gathered, but this is sort of the format. Um, that we okay. use again just so you can see the totality of the budget and then what the actual time impact will be so these are chunks of it that have been able to pull together um, there's a lot of linking cells to one another in the workbook so that as we manipulate the budget mm -hmm. you know in real time if you say hi let's manipulate this number it will push right out to the grand total um, of the whole thing and the district budget also needs to be worked on as well uh, in terms of trying to get all of this um, put together so do we know, so you said the sub rate was going up to 15, or the minimum wage over the next few years, I assume it would be a little every year? Yeah, 75 cents every year. 75 yeah. cents, so, okay. so we'll have to look at our usage. So what does that look like? Yeah. You know, how does that grow the yeah. number of subs? Yeah, you know, so the average number of subs we use per year and what that. Right so now we have it projected for 16,200 in here for subs. Mm -hmm. And it's and does that take that into account? Probably. Not for the probably it has. It does not. So, not you know, and we, I, we carried over a lot of numbers yeah. that still are yet unknown. So okay. again, this is very fluid at this point. Um, you know, we'll um, continue to refine these uh, and hopefully have more so refinements for you in February. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. No, um, this is all to kind of keep the lights on and keep us running. Is there anything sort of new or that we're so we, yeah, about? so we had a meeting, um, you know, with Chrissy. Um, to talk about <coughs> what's new, what that kind of yeah. thing. Um, you know, Chrissy has some concerns about, I was gonna say, <laughs> you want to take her, can we speak for you? <laughs> but regarding um, special ed, um, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, consult, cons consultants and services. Yeah, and con contract and services. Contract and services, thank you, that's what okay. I was looking for. Um, that we may need to increase that line because we're seeing a more of a need to bring in contracted services that deal with um, student needs. Uh -huh. cool. um, so that's an alignment that we may see a growth in. But okay. right now it's difficult to see if that's going to grow the budget because we've got to see what the numbers, how it all, how it all shifts. Yeah. I mean, it, it essentially probably will grow the budget slightly, but we've got to see if there's... Um, Places that we can get money. Exactly. Right. You shift it within the budget. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have those total numbers, and that's when you can kind of go back. But we did kind of look at, you know, you know, are we, you know, level but budgeting level services? Meaning, are we just kind of what we're pushing forward? Is that we pushing it forward? Why are we pushing it forward? Mm -hmm. Because we're providing the same thing. And this, in a budget this size, it's pretty transparent that way. When you have one grade level per one yeah. class, that kind of thing. A lot of those, a lot of those numbers are shifting for. There's not a lot of. There's no like soft pockets like we're going to do no, this year with this particular any. money. You know that kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah. Well, that's the school choice money in that way for us that we use for that. The, but what about like technology? We're thinking about potentially adding more computers for students. Is that something that we still want to try and do? Do you think? Or have we thought about that? I mean, that's, those are the kinds of things we want to get on the radar, too. I, um, I was trying to talk to Scott about that, and he's sitting down with someone on Thursday. Okay to talk about his piece and what's going to be needed there. Um, in this year's budget for technology, they're replacing the units that are in the library. Okay. Um, so that's part of their budget already? For Yeah. For this year. For this year. Um, oh, for this year, the current year. Yes. Okay. And so I kind of left that as is, thinking that next year that money could be used for um, a cart. But again, I have to talk to Scott and see what his Okay. vision is for technology right. overall. Well, because I know there's some interest in, I don't want to speak for Chrissy, but in getting a computer for each of the upper wing students at the school so that 
we have enough computers that we're not having to share them around, given how important technology is. Well, I think regardless of what the plan is in terms of one-to-one -one device match, the, given the shelf life of the, the Chromebooks that we're using, yeah. um, it's, it's a good idea to have to be ordering another part. Replacing, anyway. yeah. oh, okay. Replacing the ones that we have? Or? Well, having the next the next batch come in so yeah. that as we start losing it, they don't all die at the same time. Right. No, we um, should have like a replacement every right. year of, of the yeah. batch. A long-term replacement plan. There may be an mm -hmm. in increase, though, to get to the level of everybody having them, and then we need to plan for replacing a certain amount each year. Yeah. Is that what Scott? We're not far off. We're not far off. Because of the size of the school. Mm -hmm. Looks like, there's, looks like there's $20,000 on that line item that, that was brought over from last year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, unless I'm looking at the wrong one on, no, uh, on page two. Yeah. So, 20000 can do yeah, quite so a bit with Chromebooks. Yeah. Right. You know? Again, it's like I have to see what um, Scott's right. big vision was, yeah. whether he wanted, he has a, a plan right. for, okay. for next year. But um, okay. I left it as is with that in mind that, that if he doesn't have a plan, we would use that okay. to increase our I just think it's important to think about things that we can sell in the budget that people are interested in funding and you know bringing new to the school rather than just kind of keeping everything status quo. I mean, in other words, answer. increase the line on to make sure that it falls in Scott's plan and your plan for whatever you need yeah, for technology. Yeah, because Scott has other ideas for my <coughs> that's going to eat up what I projected. Yeah, yeah, no, you don't then, want, then we need more. Then I, I need to ask more because regardless of what we're going to do I, I definitely want to get one more Chromebook card for next year and then maybe work towards that one-to-one -one match on devices the ones we're replacing can they be repurposed or we would only replace as they as they die they get oh. to a certain point where if, if there's a malfunction it costs more to get it fixed yeah. than it would be to, to buy a new one so as they go they they're just gone okay so the special ed contractor, is that something we do now already? Or is that something new that we would be adding? It's something we do now, but we'll pull from different bu different budgets within special education. Oh. Um, spend revolving or whatnot to, to, to as Because kind of, it was unanticipated. Because, 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 because there are a lot of, yeah, these are usually unanticipated. Okay. Um, and so, but the fact that it's happening frequent enough, we're thinking that we probably should pull it and create a budget line with it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's, you know, again, when you're talking about needs and Yep. Where those are changing, that's where we see the need change. Okay. I think the so you'll have a much more complete picture come February. Okay. Can kind of nail down some of these moving parts. Um, on the timeline for the budget, is it March usually when we have invite people from different departments to come and talk to us? Yes, because if we're thinking about maybe the next meeting, we should probably just do it on on that Tuesday morning, like we been doing keep it going that way I mean if you look at who's come to our budget meeting yeah. you know open budget meetings it's uh, Paul and Taya mm -hmm. who's retired that would come in the morning so I I really like the meetings in yeah. the morning I'm not sure about you guys but I mean we should Fine, try we have um, Joyce Palmer fortune is back she's the select person who's our liaison at the school now okay. she was out of town for the fall but she's back, so she'll be joining us. And okay. I did tell her about the morning meetings, and she seems willing to try to okay. do that. Um, I know the Finance Committee wants to meet with us, though, also to talk about the budget. So it sounds like, though, we need another meeting before we're in a position to really share too much with right. them. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so I, I don't know. Agree. We might need one more meeting. This is not ready. Yeah, this we is not might ready need one more sure. meeting. Like, I guess I feel like we need to get our Right. Ourselves in order. Right. And a more complete picture of what the total budget looks like. So for our next meeting, we do that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then right. we might have to plan another meeting with the Finance Committee in between that. Or once we have the budget, then we can send it to them, let them look at it, then call us in. Yeah. You know, let them look at what we're, what we're doing. And then they, they can say, hey, can you come? Or what's available for us to come to them right. and talk to us? I mean, they're not going to come to us. So we have to go, go to, to them, them, so. Okay. And then we have our public hearing in March, generally, before we then mm -hmm. finalize it. <clears throat> okay. So when we went in December, it looks like 
it's the second Tuesday that they meet? They don't have a regular schedule. Oh, okay. They meet sort of whenever. So I think I just want to be clear to them. Like I want to communicate mm -hmm. to them what our plan is. So it sounds like we should have a better version after next meeting. Yeah. And our meeting. next meeting is a Monday night. So I don't know. Well, remember, or we did changed, we change yeah, all? We didn't change all of them. We just changed the next one. one. We yeah. said we would, we would discuss would talk that. About going and I, th I think we should, unless somebody says something different, I think, is that okay with you? I like it's your school. I it's like your, the morning meeting. It's your school. Well, it's ours. They didn't do the pledge today. <laughs> it's not that time yet, is it? Yeah, I don't it know. Is, but we'll do it. We'll do it. Um, Get out there. <laughs> <laughs> So February, what was it? Oh. February 4th is, is our Monday. next one. That was our next one. So we're going to do that Tuesday the 5th. If we were doing them on Tuesdays. Yeah. That's fine for me. Well, oh, so Frontiers, yeah. if, if, we're trying to, if we're trying to piggyback, Frontiers on the 12th. Well, I like the 5th. Like, okay. Sooner's better, know. I think, in terms of getting on top of this. Yeah. So, we go with Tuesday the 5th. We don't have anything else going on here. Is there other I guess I'm going that night, but um, that's fine. Lunar New Year. Oh, then I can't, I can't. I know. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, right next, so Monday Thank you. I like the all buff funds budgeting. That's helpful. Well, and that. again, it gives but you a true picture of what it really does cost yeah. in total and where to I educate your children, and then what you know where the where the funds go, you know what sources get brought to bear to make that happen. So, um, and again, it's, it's just, you need to believe strongly that you should be as fully transparent as possible. And can we plug in a, a hold placeholder for the salary increases or is that what you would do yes going um, forward just to yeah. have something the salaries on the back end of this the salary i have all of the positions i've done all of the step increments okay. and i've tied it to the salary scale so in this macro on the salary scale page so if i put in a number of whatever that number we is it, in it pushes okay. all the way through the entire budget um, which is kind of nice. Yes, yeah. and you can just go and it does make it, it, it does make it kind of tricky at times moving forward because because the negotiations will go through the budget season. It's yeah, already, I know. you can see the so timeline of it. Understand. It's already the second meeting is in. We have one meeting at the end of this month, but the next meeting is on until mid February. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very different time. So we have the budget sort of not knowing what the end of the exactly. Right. Right. Um, always, always have, mm -hmm. especially. Every three years, we have to we have to figure that year when we're doing the budget. That right. is, so we, how does we, that put we, just, put, we put a number. We put a number. Decide on a number. And yep. Okay. Yeah. We put that's a number true. there. That's yeah. it's that's safe. It's number. safe for us. So yeah. there's no surprises that we would have to add because whatever we put there, we don't want to have to add anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So decides it sounds like. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. 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 no. It does. It Not does. At all. It does put us in a bad. Not in a bad spot, in a tricky spot, mm -hmm. negotiation yeah, wise, because you, you got to play, you know. Um, but at the same time, we don't share that percentage, and um, you know, there's multiple. The only the from the school side, the only or the employer side, like I say, is the only advantage that there's four different budgets connected to it, so it, it makes it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but one could say that you put budget, but that's not. You know, we got to put it in a placeholder. And, right. I mean, anybody right around the table could guess what that placeholder is going to be. Yeah, sure. We're going to look at last contracts and go with a conservative number mm -hmm. to make sure yeah. to see where that is, but that doesn't mean that's the number we're going to be right. negotiating because there's a lot of other factors that are already on the table for that. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> and the other piece is that I think Patty would project the school choice also so that we would have a sense of how much we think will come in right. to and cover that. And so. um, um, we got the school choice numbers for um, the October Sims report, so we know what those are for this year. So okay. just kind of, again, doing some trend analysis, having the NASDAQ numbers is also helpful um, to be able to do that so that we can kind of figure out where we, what we think we'll end the year with in terms of a balance in that account. Yeah. Um, and then rolling that forward plus what could what be might anticipated yeah. for revenue. Um, yeah. Because remember, that's the one where we're sort of flipping into the current year of the right school choice. So we got right here. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Great. So we'll be busy in the business office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<coughs> one of many. Um, capital projects we've talked about, I think. Mm -hmm. Unless there's anything more. Commit I was going to just report on the capital budget planning, but we talked about that. So that's good that you guys are putting stuff together. <coughs> Keep me in the loops since I'm on the committee, then I sure. can help. Um, Know what's going on. Jonathan was here yesterday talking to somebody. He said they were talking about putting in our indoor swimming pool, so we might want to add that to our. <laughs> Is that a big enough to put some fish in it or actually I, swim in it? I think you'll have to talk to Jonathan. <laughs> and as a musician, I'm up for the coral risers. That's the my, risers? That's my big deal. I taught elementary music for 10 years. Wow. We had, I thought we had some. I don't know. No, but the last thing you want is for them to collapse with the kids on no, the I, mean, no, no, I don't believe we have any. No, so we don't, it's not even that they're in bad shape. I just don't think. No, they, I haven't seen them in a while. But I feel like at one point there were. Maybe they were bad enough. That they, they got, got rid of them. them. They pitched them in. Uh, collaborative? Any updates? I haven't. We haven't had any meetings. Not too many. Principal. We don't have a whole lot to report. We haven't had a very much school since. Here. No snow day. I'm very happy with that. Um, some of the things that we talked about at the last one that were just being picked off. So the fourth graders uh, concluded their uh, their food drive. Um, they were really excited to have Chief Savine come and fill that freezer. Um, we ended up on the Wheatley PD Facebook page. So. Um, and. The Chief Savini came back that day and gave us the stats. So it was 524 pounds of food, um, which would yield more or less 437 meals. That's awesome. Um, so having those numbers in there makes it real for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, the global leaders also collected fleece for animals at the shelter. I don't know if you saw it when you came oh, in. We're, yep, we're, we're waiting for it to be uh, delivered over there. Um, and they did a great job, too. And it was just great to see the kids really running these these efforts. Uh, we had our winter concert, mm -hmm. which um, I was so pleased that it was as well attended as it was. I know it's difficult in the middle of the day for people yeah, to get out nice. and come over, but I um, thought the kids did a great job and it looked like they were enjoying themselves. Um, we held we had a, a Girls on the Run meeting here the other day. Oh, so a representative came to talk to us. and. Um, We've decided to move on to the next step in terms okay. of. We're going to that third grade. It's it's third through fifth, but um, we need to discuss how that would work because obviously we would like our sixth graders to be able There's to. There's a lot of good sixth grade girls to participate. Um, <laughs> Is this? Are you talking we'll talk. about actually doing like? It's a cross country, cross country running type of thing. It's, it's an organization in the area, but it, it's um, <laughs> it's more social emotional than it is physical fitness. Oh, wow. There, obviously, it's girls on the run, so there's a component of physical fitness. But um, they meet twice a week after school, and they sit down and they there's a there's a curriculum that comes with it. It's a lot of lessons on um, empowerment yeah. and. You know, being able to Confident. to advocate for themselves, and um, then some of the regular stuff that comes up with girls as they get older in terms of getting along with peers, and um, it's a it's a great program. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice multi grade thing, I think. Too, for the well, girls. Mr. Kara had the uh, Friday morning running club last spring, and my kids loved it. Right, and he's going to do that because I had expressed concerns about having this. Just for, for the, the girls, girls and, and not having boys. an equivalent for the boys. So my second graders he is, um, aside from wanting to help us out with the girls on the run, he's also going to make sure that, that that gets going again so the boys will have something. But the, um, the season culminates with a race. Mm -hmm. the, the winter race just happened at Smith College in December. Um, <coughs> on the week, the only week that we had snow on the ground, unfortunately. <laughs> um, the spring race would be at Springfield College. Mm -hmm. And they provide help for busing and all those kinds of things. So wow. there's still some details that need to be worked out. There's a cost for the kids to, Partic to participate, but there's a sliding scale. They say we don't turn anyone away. Um, 
its own. I'm pretty okay. excited to get that going. There were quite a few staff members that were they're interested that were there and interested in, in that. Deerfield, I think Deerfield has one. Mm -hmm. Well, possible. Yeah. It's good. a it's That's a awesome. good sized commitment for someone who yeah one person. It's suggested that one person is the lead and can be at both of the times that they meet. But for the other spots, the other coaching spots, if someone can make it on a Tuesday, but they can't make it on a Thursday, then someone else can, mm -hmm. you know, they can tag team it as long as there's one person who's consistent on both days. Jesse's been. Yeah, she's, she's the one who acquired oh, okay. this for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so we had the opportunity oh, yes. to check on our. <laughs> the opportunity. Um, yeah. That's good. To check on some of our emergency systems um, when we detected a smell of gas outside the building on December 13th, um, which happened to be a very cold day. Um, Everyone responded to it the way that I would want them to, um, and it was quickly determined that it was not, um, it was not natural gas. Well, it was, but <laughs> a natural. <laughs> gas. <laughs> it was related to was septic guessing. issues, <laughs> not. Um, the the biggest thing to come out of it was that. Uh, our 911 call got routed to Canada. <laughs> That's why they couldn't find us. So it was actually good that yeah. we had the opportunity to see that there's a little glitch there, and it has to do with our address. The 911 system is based on your mailing address, right? So our mail is South Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Which is not in Canada. But our phone thinks that we are in Waitley. And when the two of them tried to connect, it didn't, they, they couldn't, couldn't recognize Waitley. So oh. Mary ended up speaking to someone up in, up in Canada. So it was good that that happened at a time when there was not a, a critical emergency happening. Mm. So. That's why I said it was an opportunity for us. Um, Maybe we should do a test of that. Sure. They have, I, um, so Scott Paul fixed it on the phone side. So now the phone thinks we are in South Deerfield too, which I, I don't understand. Oh, no, it's a small it's town very confusing thing. around here. <laughs> 911 would not go by our mailing address, but our actual address because they need to respond. Well, yeah, your physical address versus, yeah. well, I don't, I don't, it's been explained to me a thousand times with the mailing why and we're, the phone out. but I don't understand why we're not just Waitley, but that's, that's an <laughs> it's RFD, it's RFD. We're too small. has a lot to do with RFD. Yeah, well, rural not, it's very confusing. Mm -hmm. um, so that got changed on our side and then Chief Savini came and did a, a test. So. Mm -hmm. We should be good, good to go. Okay. Um, we're also having our brand new fancy phone system. Um, we're going to have some of the emergency numbers programmed in here. So should we have an issue with 911, we can hit a button okay. and get Chief right City. Yeah. 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 So um, the last thing, we're going to have a visitor next week if anyone wants to come. Courtney Campbell is a singer and storyteller coming in from California. She's going to the four schools. Um, and I've heard great reviews about her. So is it for all grades? Yep. What There's going to be three different shows. So oh, I can three. You'll send a notice. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's about it. Thank you. Good job on the last week situation. Mm -hmm. Well handled. <laughs> well, fortunately, I was able to pull someone away from the meeting that he was supposed to be yeah. at. And, and I said to Mary, it felt much better when Dad arrived because <laughs> there was someone else there. Well, Double check with I was outside and they answer. wouldn't let me in, but the bus drivers were very helpful. Yeah. yeah. I just want to acknowledge that and taking some of the kids so people could get off to work. <coughs> yeah, it was because it was a little chaotic. The timing it, was the timing was, was not odd, but again it gave us a chance to think about yeah. what what happens in those odd times because Right. That is when things happen. Yeah. Is yeah. not when everyone is seated in their homeroom, classroom, you know, and attendance has been taken and all that. So 
there are some things that we need to work on, but. Mm -hmm. So next, you said next Monday. Um, in the morning, there'll be three, three shows. Will that, will all the all school meeting be changed? Yeah. And you said it's just in the morning. Yeah, it should, I was trying to have it end before lunch. Um, and then there's that one to make sure. Yes, because that's happening. Now. Okay. 14th is a very busy day for yeah. us around here. <laughs> okay. So just to follow up with Chris was just talking about the uh, with the, the gas the concerned gas. We have a four town safety meeting later this week where quarterly we get together with uh, um, all the police, fire, state police, and we kind of run through things. And so we'll be going through this to as people watch like what's the what's following up behind the scenes so that mm -hmm. you know we're, you know obviously we learn a lesson here. We make sure all the schools are learning their lessons through. Um, each lesson the schools you know, pick up. So um, we'll be talk, talking about it more in, in the follow through with all the departments there. So just kind of see, so it's not like these incidents happen and then nothing, there's no follow up and gathering of all the departments in the area, but that's, that's where that takes place and that's on Thursday morning um, with all the administrative team and the local um, police and fire. Um, so in the, uh, my superintendent's report's very brief. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with, between budgets and collective bargaining and, the, and the, those kind of things, but um, taking a lot of time, but it's not a long list. So we did move the files over and um, there's been a flurry of emails with the attorneys trying to close up the final of the sale of Christian Lane. So that um, should be happening in the next week or so, um, if not this week. Um, negotiations is underway. Um, we did have an initial session. There is a strategy session for our team, um, for the school's team rather, on the 23rd and then the next session on the 31st. And as I mentioned, it's on the agenda moving forward. It's always, we have executive sessions, so if at any time the committee wants a, uh, an in-depth update, mm -hmm. we can go to an executive session. Okay. So that'll be throughout the throughout the whole process. Okay. So anyway, right now there's not much to say because we haven't done any formal ask. It was just the procedures, mm -hmm. setting dates, ground rules, that kind of stuff. So there's no real, okay. there's no real uh, information. So we can still go to executive session and upon your request, but I don't have real, any at this point, I came in the future though. Um, and then the the bids for uh, business manager service did go out um, and were open. There was um, there was only one bid and was accepted <laughs> uh, for TMS moving forward. One here. Um, <laughs> and for TMS moving forward, um, and then the at the joint meeting on the 22nd on the agenda will be um, what's going to happen next year for the business managers mm -hmm. to join school committees to decide. So the one bid that was accepted. That's not for next year? No, that was from uh, January 31st through July 30th. Okay. 31st, 30th, 31st. How many days are July? End of July. <coughs> seven months. <laughs> yes, right. we did seven months because of, if there is any change we wanted, it was talked that, I think it was at the joint meeting, it was brought up that overlap. Um, the overlap um, really it's hurt, really, the, really hurt the new, <coughs> when Tina's had to step in and close out one books and open up new books, it really showed that it's, difficult thing to do so if there is a change it's it makes sense for the additional time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um so it's an executive session there's not much difference so no. I don't think we need Bad to no details, yeah, so. go into that maybe next time. Okay. Good luck with the negotiations. Um make oh, a motion to adjourn. I had a oh. sorry. Um what grade was the IA? Sixth grade. Oh, okay. What IA? The new, the new the one? Sixth yeah. Grade. Yeah. We had gone a couple months without. Good. Um, and it, it seems to be working out very well. Okay. Well, you might know more than I do. Yeah, it seems <laughs> like it's working fine so far. And that rate <laughs> is more than the $12. Yep. Yeah, but it's less than the 15, so that's good. They're going to be interesting. Is that coming up in the negotiation? Well, I don't know we can talk we about it, but yeah. Yeah. They, I'm sure they will. Yeah. <laughs> they better. It's, it's always about money. Uh, okay. Great. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Make a motion adjourned.